So My Hero Academia Season 7 has just started airing and I already kind of don't like it. Or at least I don't really like a certain aspect of it and that is the UA Trader. After a lot of waiting, the Trader has been revealed to be Aoyama. And I hate that Aoyama is the Trader. The UA Trader was something that has been foreshadowed since the beginning of the story. And typically when an offer sets something up early in the story, especially in a long story, it's because it's something that they have thought out thoroughly. They usually have a very specific plan that they're planning to execute but looking at how this was handled there is nothing that would indicate this seven seasons into the show after absolutely no clues about who the traitor is it's all of a sudden just revealed out of nowhere the audience gets no chance to work it out and it just happens out of the blue the characters in the show don't even work it out for themselves they just happen to overhear them discussing the fact that he's the traitor like it's a fucking comedy <laughs> Someone who has infiltrated UA and has been a secret agent for like 7 seasons just spills their plan in the forest and happens to get overheard? Like, are you kidding me? This is not how you do a reveal at all. A show that's really good at doing these types of reveals is Attack on Titan and it has a pretty similar example with Annie. The viewer is given plenty of hints and clues to work it out and so do the main characters. The female Titan knows Eren's personality and face so they know it's one of the cadets. Annie takes someone else's gear to the inspection, she even looks like the female titan. Even when they come to the conclusion that Annie is probably the female titan, they're still not 100% sure before they confront her. And this is all done in 7 episodes. My hero's reveal takes 7 seasons and is so lackluster. You wanna know how they find out that Aoyama is the traitor? It's because Deku thought he looked a bit sad. Oh hell no. The only other main reason they figure it out is that Aoyama was like the only person who couldn't say anything to Deku when he was on his vigilante arc, which is a pretty small detail, but also something that happened only like five episodes ago. And I don't even want to talk about the cheese scene because it's so stupid. There are a few small hints here and there throughout the show, but they're all so vague and small that they could literally be referring to anything. The reveal sucks, but you know what sucks even more? The fact that the traitor could have been any anyone else in the class and it wouldn't change anything. There is nothing about Aoyama that is different from the other class A members. We learned that Aoyama was actually quirkless right after he gets caught and was forced to do all this by one for all, but give this backstory to any of the other side characters in the class like Sato and it wouldn't change anything. It's not even like it's required for a character to become evil because Aoyama didn't even want to do anything that he did, he's still a good guy being blackmailed. An attack on Titan, Annie had to be the the traitor or the story wouldn't make any sense. Reiner and Bertolt had to be the titans. Ymir had to be a titan. Aoyama did not have to be the traitor. Invisible Girl could have been the traitor and honestly it probably would have made even more sense. If All for One wanted a spy in UA, wouldn't it make more sense to give that person a quirk like invisibility so they could sneak around and overhear things instead of a stomach laser. The quirk doesn't even sue his body, so All For One was honestly lucky that Aoyama even got accepted into UA in the first place. The fact of the matter is that more than half of class 1A are so underdeveloped that any of them being revealed to be the traitor would have been disappointing. This reveal happens, like I said, out of absolute nowhere. There is no build up to this moment, it just happens. No scenes of the characters even attempting to figure it out. It just happens at the beginning of an episode. And the only reason it happens is because the story needs it to happen. The story needed this reveal to happen now so that the heroes would have a way of finding or tricking All for One. Think about it, why couldn't this reveal have happened before? All for One got out of prison like 15 episodes ago. Wouldn't it make more sense for a conversation like this to take place then? And we saw no change in Aoyama's personality when he did break out of prison. This is an issue that I've been having with my hero that has happened more and more recently. Events occurring because the story needs it to. Another moment like this happens at the beginning of the season when Star and Stripe fights Shigaraki. Now in my last video I did say that I enjoyed the first episode and I did. But after seeing the second episode and the full scope of what was 
was intended here, I can't say I'm much of a fan. You see, even though I liked the first episode, I wasn't that much of a fan of how Star and Stripe just spawned in the story out of nowhere. She had basically never been foreshadowed up until this point. You'd think that the strongest character in a story that would go on to fight the main antagonist and almost win in its seventh season would at least have like one scene before that actually happened. But honestly, I kind of let it slide because I thought the fight was pretty entertaining and I thought her character and backstory was decent. I was ready to see how she was going to contribute to the story, but she doesn't. She dies two episodes after showing up. The only reason she was brought into the story was to nerf All For One and buy the main character some time because the offer has made the main villain too strong. So strong that we needed to introduce a character to take away his quirks and reveal the traitor who can help them find or trick him. And all of this happens in the span of three episodes just so we can have another training arc. I want you to know that I get no joy from critiquing my hero like this because I still really love the series but it's just frustrating to see how much the quality has dropped from what it used to be honestly at the end of the day i just hope it gets revealed that principal nesu is the actual traitor i know that rat bastard is evil man before the season started there were a couple of things i really hope that this show would fix and um well I'm not quite sure if it, they have been fixed yet, so if you want to check out what those things are, make sure to check out this video right here. 